you have your Bible, please join me to read the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 10. While I was coming with my husband this afternoon, he kept asking me, what's the topic you are speaking on? I told him, sir, God has not told me anything. Before we go here, he asked me again. He said, should I give you a topic? I said, is that what God is saying? I said, oh, because those that are close to me know that on the God's I will not act. And while I got to the room, I kept clamoring to be alone. But the children were with me. Of course, they are blessings. And I told them, if you don't sleep, I will force you to sleep. Because I need to hear from God. And then tonight, the Lord, I said, Lord, what, first of all, what do you have for your people tonight? And he said to me, Job chapter 9, verse 10. Can we read together? He does great things, yes, too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. And the Lord said to me, there shall be miracles without numbers. If you are going to hear the data of that miracle, can I hear you shout it louder? I'm 
my life. And that is the message tonight. Victory over adversity. Pray in the Holy Ghost if you can pray in the Holy Ghost. Yo 
theology. That is heresy. Because the master himself said, In the world you are, until you get to heaven, you will continue to experience adversity. Is somebody getting it tonight? And that is why the Bible said, If your strength fail you in the days of adversity, then you are small. Proper 24 percent. If anyone fails in the days of adversity, your strength is small. All of these scriptures is open your eyes to understand that as long as you live here on earth, you will go through adversity. Adversity. What is it all about? Adversity is pressure of this world. Adversity is the purpose of this world. Somebody will say, Sister Jonah, what is adversity? Adversity is the distress of this world. Adversity is the difficult times of this world. Adversity is the hard times of this world. Adversity is the challenges you and I are going through as we live here on earth. Adversity is the trials you and I are going through on a daily basis as we live here on earth. Adversity is those struggles in your heart. Adversity is a close pain in your body. The adversity, the devil can bring it in a form of sickness and attack over your head. The devil can bring it in a form of attack over your finance. Somebody you are doing well, all of a sudden, a liver can go shake You just realize that everything is just going down, going down, and going down, and you cannot even explain. We are going to minister this today. At the time when I was with the Lord said to me, there is a man here, he's a strong man, he has been pursuing something, but he has failed many times. But then, if he can humble himself and seek me, I will show him the message and I will put him, I will give him what he's pursuing. And I said, who is this person that is pursuing something here? And the brother that was presenting me told me, is this man, he's a governorship, he has been a governorship candidate for more than three times. And he has failed. And my first said, can you come out for prayer? The Lord said, if you can humbly seek him, if you can humbly seek for his mercy, he said, it's only his mercy that will place you on that seat here for him. And the man came out with all humility. And, and anything that happened to him he was doing it. Whether you like it or not, one way or the other, you are dealing with issues. And these issues are what we call adversity. I don't know the issues you are dealing right now. It could be in your marital life. You and your husband never agrees. It could be in your relationship life. Disappointment upon disappointment. It could be in your business. It's no longer working. I don't know the adversity you are going through. It can be as a minister. You have been running around the same environment. You have been removed in the same environment. Come on. 
But tonight I hear the Lord say, you have victory over every adversity. I don't know what she's teaching. 
And he kept wondering until I saw that man on her waist. I said, this is the reason. Throughout the three days, she stood there, she said it off in that room. She didn't do it in the name of the father for one day. And I confronted her, she said it. Not every time person they pray. The only source of victory is Jesus. So you can hear tonight. You have been going from freedom to force. You have been running health and center. Looking for solutions. Yet there is no solution. Looking for a way out of the problem in your life. Looking for a way out of the challenges in your life. I am here to tell you that there is only one man that has the answer. And that is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have not submitted to him, you have the opportunity tonight to submit to Jesus. If you have not recognized him in your life, as the, your personal Lord and Savior, the only master, you have the privilege tonight to do so. You have the great opportunity tonight to do so. Because when you welcome him in your life, he will come and be in charge. And then he will count every storm. The Bible said, and the apostle walked in, Lord, don't you bother that we perish. And Jesus stood up and calmed the storm. He is the only solution to every storm in your life. Brother, let me tell you, I have seen a first class not get a job, but I've seen a top class get the same job that the first class is supposed to get. In other words, it's not for him that run it. It's not for him that read it. But God, that show excellence. My book that is coming out, I wrote in that book, seven most important things you need in life. Hear me, let me tell you, everything God created is important, but this seven is most important. And one of them, let me be useful, is God. If you don't have God in your life, you have no life. You have no life. I have the Bible said in the Jesus of Amana. It's not the strongest man that wins the battle. It's not the most intelligent that succeeds. It's not the most brilliant that is blessed for time and chance happen to them all. Happen to them all. If God did not lift you, no one can lift you. Because man can lift you to them and break you tangibly. If man takes you up and you don't treat him together, he breaks you down. I have seen a virgin, man, they are not virgin, for eight years they have no child. This is the reason why you cannot journey in this journey of life without Jesus. He's the only man that can lift you. Quickly, as I round up, I want to tell you the principle of having victory over adversity. Just very few principles you can apply, and then you will be on the journey of a victorious, a victorious living. You will be on the journey of a victorious life. Somebody asked me one day, Sister Thomas, I want to ask you, all these are sad things with the dead. She is not going to get attacked. She is not going to get attacked. That is because we know the principle of living a victorious life. It's not that the devil doesn't attack us. It's not that we are free from self. We are only free from we are fighting. But because we have the key to living a victorious life. And that is what I want to teach you tonight. Number one. Number one key to living a victorious life. An overcoming life. Or an overcomer's life. Is hunger for freedom. Somebody say hunger for freedom. Change. That's what it is. When you pass hunger to be free from the captivity of the devil, those of the healing ministry will tell you that if somebody is not willing to be delivered, there's no need to minister to deliver because the person is not going to, you know, release him or herself. But I read my Bible, the devil says, in the days of his power, men shall be willing. Yes, sir. If you don't drink, with your power to come, you will be willing by force. So tonight you have no option. No power that has followed you yet might have option to leave. They, they don't have a choice than to let you be. Tonight, because the Bible says in the name of the power, men shall you win. The power of God will come here tonight. Whether the devil like it or not, he will at least walk out. Change. Hunger for change. Hunger for freedom. 
Psalm 81 verse 7. The Lord said, they that are thirsty, let them open wide their mouths and I will feed them. John chapter 7 verse 37 and 38. He said, if you are thirsty and hungry, come to me and I will fill you up and out of you shall begin to flow rivers of the living world. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. He said, let them that they that thirsty and hunger to righteousness for they shall be filled. If you are hungry for freedom, you will be free because hunger gives back to expectation and expectation delivers manifestation. Amen. So when you hunger, then your expectation will be high. Faith will be built and then manifestation will surely take place. Either by chance or by intention. It can be by chance. A man of God can be passing on to you and say, You, I saw something, something, something. By my prophetic conscience, I command that thing to leave you by chance, you are free. Because there was an expectation. And that expectation was given birth to manifestation. Number two principle of victorious life is persistent prayer. Somebody say persistent prayer. Persistent. My brother that just left the pulpit before I climbed. He said, look at this verse 1. Men ought to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. He said, pray always. Whether you like it or not. As long as you live here on earth and you are a child of God, there is no other language God understands except the language of prayer. You must pray. You must learn to pray. Whenever I hear some people come to me, they will say, Sister Choma, I have done different kinds of prayer. I have fasted. I have been short and tired. Just help me out. Do the prayer for me. Pray the prayer because I don't know what to pray again. And when you tell me that, the next question I do ask the leader, after praying, say you have prayed different kinds of prayer, has the situation changed? And you tell me, no, I said that you have not finished praying. You have to pray until something happens. Do you know how many years the person is going to heal? They kept going to heal, they kept praying. I know this is about generation. They will say, Stop that place, I don't go first time. Should I don't go to the Jesus program first time? I don't go second time. Wait till they go to the day. They go, You, you I'm not the great thing, I don't know where they go. Hannah kept going to heal. She kept praying. She kept praying. She kept praying. And God was supposed to say, You know, say, Samuel is not an ordinary being. Samuel cannot be born like an ordinary child. Samuel has to be possessed before he becomes. And so, many years that Hannah was praying, it's not that God has not heard, but something was happening. God had to prepare that prophet before sending him. So all those years of waiting was the years of process. No wonder the Bible says, they shall wait upon the Lord shall have their strength renewed. You don't wait by holding your hand. You wait by persistent prayer. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. He says pray always. All kinds of prayer. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Jude verse 20. He says only my brethren. Building up yourself in the most holy faith. And praying in the Holy Ghost. If you must pray, pray in the Holy Ghost. Check your name and say name for all. Number four, number three, Philippians chapter four, verse six, he said, Make your present your request unto him by what? Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. And so, number three principle of a victorious life is life of thanksgiving. There was a particular year in my life I didn't ask God for anything. The only prayer I have is thank you, Jesus. I thank you, and no matter the need I have, I don't ask. I thank you. And every of my prayer begins with thanksgiving. Sometimes I will thank him for two hours before I remember that I need to make a request. Thanksgiving is the principle, is the key to a victorious living. You know, and I, if you have been close to my husband, I have the privilege to be living with your father in the Lord. It's a privilege. And I have a fire yes, And I have a fire yes, Hallelujah. Yes, you know what? Anytime he has a need, in Asia, we need this, we need 
sneaky, sneaky. That's why he will be praising God and be jumping up. I'm dancing in the house. I'll be like this man on the back. Oh, well. <laughs> We're talking about serious issues here. You're dancing. Or say, Jehovah, go prove her. Amen. Amen. That's why he praises her. Yes. When there is a need, that's why he will worship her. He worships every now and then. But when that kind that pressure comes, that you think that Francis has knocked at the door, that's why he will pray her. Yes. Praise her. Yes. He will not pray her and praise. Thanksgiving. A man of God I love and I respect so much says, gratitude is a multiplier. When you show God gratitude by thanking Him, He will multiply your goodness. Your one, He will double it. Your two, He will double it. Now I come to, I watch things with some people and they just say, or God When you praise God, your doors open. When you praise God, chains are broken. Praise is thanksgiving. You know, as our apostles is saying, you don't expect me to be quoted because of our time. So I'm rushing the message. But thanksgiving, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6b, thanksgiving attracts God to answer our prayer speedily. David was a man with a lifestyle of gratitude. No matter the situation David found himself, he will praise God. He will worship God. He will praise God. Rejoice always. Praise continuously. Give thanks in every circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. Number four. Principle of victorious living. Walk in faith. Somebody say walk in faith. Walk in faith. Bible says faith is everything. Is the currency that you can the only universal currency that can help you to affect anything in God's kingdom. Are you getting me? And in the kingdom of God is governed by principle. But if you know that in a house there are keys to many rooms, right? But there is a particular key we used to call master. That key can open every door. You don't see it carelessly. Faith is that master key that can affect anything in God's kingdom. And the one that the Bible said, if you really want to please God, then you must live a life of faith. Hebrews 11 has said it all. With faith, our fathers in the Lord accept breakthrough. With faith, they accept miracles. With faith, they accept anything they wanted to accept in God's kingdom. So, men and brethren, brothers and sisters, the four principles of victorious living is what I've just told you. And this is our principle. This is how we live. This is how we roll. You want to live a victorious life from this moment. Because I know that after tonight, God will break the yoke of any adversity in your life. But then, after the yoke is broken, you need to begin to live a victorious life. This principle, if you can apply it from this day, you will see that you will surmount every obstacle. You will surmount every attack. No matter how the devil fashions the attack. No matter how the devil wires the attack. You will overcome in the name of Jesus. I said you will overcome in the name of Jesus. I said you shall be victorious. I said you shall be victorious. I said you shall be victorious. Stand on your feet. Shall they break up those assaults? Break the cup of superstition. Everybody in your life. 
my mouth. In the name of Jesus. And I leave the part, the second part, he said, and the mountains and the hills shall be made level. What? The people of Israel could not possess the promised land until the wall of Jericho fell down. What is that mountain something as a barrier between you and your breakthrough? That breakthrough has lingered for so long. That increase has lingered for so long. That marital sentiment has lingered for so long. That ministerial explosion, conquering peace, terror peace, has lingered for so long.
verse 10 and 11. And the Bible says, For you grant victory to kings. You grant victory to kings. You rescued your servant, David, from the latter soul. Serve me. Rescue me from the powers of my enemies. Their mouths are full of lies. They swear to tell the truth, but they lie instead. They are going to pray. The Bible says he rescued kings. They are going to cry and say to God, he grant victory to kings. Every battle in my life, open and hidden. Oh God, grant me victory. Rescue me. I drop. So that's it. 
Psalm 44, verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, May our bands be filled. Do you have a van? Is there anything that is special? Do you have something you want to create? Are you sure? Do you have a van that you need it to be filled? How many bands that come to have? I have more than four. How many to fill up? The way it will happen, you know the person when you are not expecting money. Hey. And I hear again the Lord says, Number two way it will happen. You will do the kind of business you have not done before, make the kind of profit you have never made. Hey. Yes. And then finally, that person that is crying that here you are working, what they are paying you is not giving you joy. For you don't, you don't have an option, for you just have to be there. I hear the Lord say there is a meeting on your behalf. And there is a turn around. Lift up your right hand. The Bible says your pants shall be filled with crops of every kind. In other words, not just one sided testimony. Every kind. If you need plenty of money, money will come. If you need good health, it will come. You need my bad job. What do you need? What do you need? You want to give birth to children? The Lord said, Your pants shall be filled. And He said, Your oxen shall be loaded. He said, With everything good, lift up your hands, two hands.